Hello guys and welcome to episode 112 of my Total War Warhammer 2 playthrough playing as the Von Karsteins on very hard difficulty. Today we are going to be moving on after taking the ancient city of Kintex. Uh, we're going to be going and picking up the rest of the uh, settlements in the province. We're also going to have to keep an eye on Rhone Hellebron though because there's a good chance that she could come out from the Plain of Dogs and round the Bleak Cold Fortress and sort of take that from us. That would be rather inconvenient. Um, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But everything was more or less done for this turn. We just got to find places to spend our cash and Torsus Eye is perfectly fine. Also at White Peak, yeah, we can build the walls there. That is good. And we can also get marble at White Peak, so we'll do that. Imminent Rebellion, we are prepared for, so let's move on. So I'm going to actually slow down the end turn for the Dark Elves. No idea why it's showing us the movement though. Maybe it's because they're specifically targeting knees, us. Then and only. A peace treaty. We are going to decline. I didn't actually slow down the turn for them, but it looks like they stayed where they are anyway. Okay. Uh, assault unit success. Kind of annoying. Uh, looks like Hellspire Mountains is going to rebel. No surprise. Let's just uh, crush this rebellion. And get prepared for the next one. Yeah, that will re still rebel next turn, so we'll just stand next to the settlement. Uh, let's maybe build the vampire crypts if we are going to commit to holding on to these settlements. Still got minus 10 public order, it's going to rebel again. Yes. Bug camp is quite well defended, actually. But there is no army there, so I think we can still take it. Okay, Caron Car finished demolishing its mausoleum, so we'll go ahead and get the ghost fence in there. Let's now move round to Blacklight Tower. Saying that, looks like we're going to have to stay in Caron Car this turn because the rebellion is about to occur. Right, time for Isabella to start working her way over here. Maybe we'll have a r romantic reunion between. Isabella and uh, Vlad at some point. This tribute to the gods. Let's just go army perform better in the campaign. Was that for Isabella? I think it was. I mean, she was the only one that I moved that was on water, so that makes sense. But yeah, woman needs to take the settlement. Shrine of Sotek. Let's fight this on the battlement. It looks like the Dark Elves, in general, have been building their walls. Just making things quite awkward. Okay, let's gamble for more wins. Um, we will put all of these Blood Knights in the forest and the Black Knights. Uh, I'm going to have all of my Vargas to one side with my leader. I'll also bring my vampire over there. Okay, let's start the deployment, start the battle. Those lot can go up on the right. These lot can go up on the left. Vargolf can go for the gate. I might just tell him to hold back for a little while though. And these can all fly off to the left side. 
the plan is to try and engage all of these dark shards again. I'll try and get a nice breath attack onto the dark shards on the gate. Hopefully we can get a decent one. They are kind of on the steps, which kind of sucks. I might target the far ones. See if we hit him. Okay, or not. <laughs> oh, woman. There you go. Oh, they grouped up nicely for you as well. They're kind. Um, let's uh, dive down into them then. Good. And we can also make sure we invocate those Kenrys. I'm going to put down the Helm Discord. And our Vargolf can now go hit the gates. Good. What? Swiftly. And we do have some decent magic here that we can use. I think I'm just going to have my vampire come and attack the Dark Shards for now. He's pretty good in melee, so good work. Now those infantry units can probably just come straight off the walls again. Maybe head towards the center. Okay, we have time for another breath attack. Let's just take off. I might actually put a breath attack into these dark riders. We didn't actually do too much. But now let's have Woman come down into these witch elves. We'll just have our Vargoth come through, so I think we just captured the gates outright. Uh, let's just use a Melkos Mystify Miasma. Since there's no real room for a Vortex spell. I could maybe put one on the Dark Riders with a repeat of crossbows. That should make them run away. Yep. Job done. Okay, I need to remember after this battle to recruit back our regiment of renown, the Mortis Engine. Need these units to get off the wall so that I can invocate them. Ran out of time. Damn it. One hundred and fifty eight kills for Warmond. Not bad at all. Okay, um, so we will take that decisive victory, and that's also completed a, a mission. Wow. Okay, it's not often that happens. <laughs> we don't normally uh, go for those missions. But here I'm going to build the Balefire Brazier and the Gibbet, 
And then we're going to go for Maku Peaks, which is the main settlement. And then we'll deal with the Rebellion. That's assuming that I can reach Maku Peaks in the next turn. I don't think I will be able to. We'll see. She really needs some more defensive skill, so... Inviable. I don't know, it's only three armor. Like, I may as well just make her have the ability of Occam's Mind Razor. Okay, as for Vlad, uh, he is waiting there for the Rebellion. Um, we have Kintex, the ability to build the Vampire Crypts, so we'll do that. And Minrad will be heading south. And we'll go to Moonshard next. Oh, those guys are very weak. Let's just get rid of them. And I'll get another fresh unit. Saves us have to worry about it. Um, here I'm going to get rid of the Skeleton Spearmen. And we're going to recruit the Claw of Nagash. I could also get rid of the Skeleton Warriors and get the Feasters of the Dusk in here. I'm not going to bother. It's fine. I'd rather just pay no upkeep for that extra unit. Okay, time for Milland to take Unicorn Gate. I'm just going to upgrade these buildings here. Make sure we get the walls there. Okay. Let's actually stay in Tordranil for this turn, because plus 18 public order is pretty huge. So, that's good. And then next turn we'll be in range to attack Unicorn Gate anyway. County Wald is continuing north. Uh, let's come around here and we'll take out this Rurug army. Uh, then we'll go back through the mountains towards Castle Drakenhof. Right, Bethilda can assassinate this guy. Let's go. Boom. Nice. Very nice. Mathilda finally doing work. We know about that imminent rebellion. We don't care. Five turns until our research is done. Let's move on to the next one. So the Wood Elves actually raised Skeggy, which I guess is better than them taking it. I'm just hoping that they don't take it afterwards. That would be kind of irritating. I guess as the Wood Elves, you do always raise before you occupy because you, you can't get a settlement that's higher level than like one. So just occupying doesn't really benefit you. You don't rely on growth, except from in your main settlements. Raider trait. Extra income from raiding. Minus two public order for the local enemy province. Not too bad. Got another rebellion to worry about. Where is that? The northern jungles of Pahua Laksa. Okay. Are we in range to attack it's Maku Peaks? We are. Okay, that's great. Because that means I can make sure the rebellion spawns there by taking it this turn. Seize the blood. Wake them out. Let's find this on the battle map. We have our Claw of Nagash back, which is nice. And let's gamble for more wins. And we will start the deployment. This is also a map that looks pretty nice. I really like all this like extra terrain. It's just really sad that you can't like move your camera outside the boundaries to have a good look around because like, these little details are really, really nice. 
I think it would be great to have like battles down in these valleys, you know, on certain types of battle maps. Isn't that some sort of lift? Yeah, it's really interesting. Right, um, let's get our infantry together. Do I have anything else that's going to be going there? Yeah, okay, we've got our Chlorum Nagash and the Vargolf. I'm going to keep all of my Vargais to one side. My Blood Knights don't really have anywhere to hide. So I'll just keep them off to the left. I'm being. Start the battle. And we'll have these guys start to climb. Uh, Vargites can push to the left with our dragon. Alright, what are the Dark Shards looking like? I might just target these Black Arc Corsairs with Hambos with the first breath attack. It's really annoying when like the Dark Shards take like half and half on the center because it makes the breath attacks really shit. Oh, that's not a good idea. Okay. You hear yet? Like I could potentially target these ones. Yeah, let's try that. The trouble is if it fires into the corner of the stairs, then it doesn't really do too much damage. Yeah, kind of like it did. Oh well. I'm gonna just smash into those units. Just put the invocation on the can race. I'll have the Vargolf now come back. Oh, those units just got absolutely wrecked. Uh, can we get a really nice vortex down here? Is she going to cast it? I might cancel it because she didn't cast it in time. There is definitely a better place. And that is it. This will actually damage our can rays quite a bit. Which is quite rough. But thankfully, it's doing a lot of damage to them as well. A lot of damage to them. Wow. They are gone. <laughs> Use the Torment Sword. Buff this guy up. Use the Helm of Discord. I might have the Vargas take off so that I can do an invocation. Okay. And then we'll dive back onto another unit. Uh, I guess the Blackguard and Agrond are the only unit that we can attack, so let's just pile into them, but this time round the charge bonus will help us annihilate them, so that's not too bad. Might have these uh, ones that were hurt take off again. And dive back in again. A vampire. Go and attack the ranged forces. We'll throw back a spell or two. And that's going to be victory. Nice. That was actually relatively simple. Just need to make sure that I'm healing up the can race. Managed to fit in another one. Yeah. 
And that is it. Decisive victory. If only the auto resolve allowed me to click auto resolve and it do this. And I'll tell you now, it would like just kill off my Vargolf or something stupid like that if I click the auto resolve. That is Maku Peaks under our control. We don't need the Binding Circle, we don't need the Abyssal Wood. Let's just start building the Balefire Brazier there. I'm tempted to also get rid of the Forbidden Library. Yeah, we'll do that as well. We really need the research rate less and less. Like, the income generated is pretty nice. Actually, let's keep it. Let's keep it. The in income generated is, yeah, like I said, it's pretty decent. Okay, uh, Vlad uh, needs to wipe out this rebellion, so let's just do that now. I'm not going to wait around. Take the extra cash. And that's going to be minus 12, but if we march, I think we can possibly reach Blacklight Tower in the next turn. Or at least the turn after. Isabella continuing on the sea and then we have Minerad. He's going to take the Moon Shard. Nice easy auto resolve. Thank you very much. And that's given us another Balefire Brazier. Perfect. Uh, Milland has leveled up. So let's make sure we assign that skill point into Quick Blood. We have our Necromancer max out Van Hell's Dance Macabre. And we'll go towards Unicorn Gate. Let's fight this on the battle map. So this is actually going to be a little bit harder than usual because the Shrine of Cain, or the Sword of Cain, is no longer in our possession, so Milland won't be able to wipe out the Hydras and the Black Dragons so easy. But we will still be able to hit those nice breath attacks and he can still cause carnage on the walls. But he is still strong after all. So, set up the usual. Blood Knights on the right. I think this also kind of forces them to put some troops on this gate, which helps us out. And then we can just start the battle. Do the same old stuff. Good. I'm just going to be a little bit patient with the Mort's Engine and the Vargolf. I guess the Necromancer can start moving forwards because he takes forever anyway. This will be a little bit more tough than usual. Especially without the, uh, the Sword of Cain uh, Vortex spell as well. It also looks like they haven't deployed anything to the right side, so there is that. Might be worth sending like a unit of Blood Knights over there just for the sake of distraction. Alright, let's get an invocation onto these canneries. And also do it with my Necromancer. And we'll start to go hit down the gate. Yeah, imagine that uh, vortex attack here. Oh, it would have been so good. I guess we can also do like a wind of death though. How much does an upgraded wind of death cost? Yeah, those wind of deaths can be pretty damn disgusting. Squiggle. 
Well, so he's still absolutely annihilated this Dark Shard unit. It's just, I think in general, we're going to take more damage on our infantry units than we do normally. They just have more reinforcements to throw on the wall. Any good spots for spells? We could do like the Van Hell's Dance Macabre. It doesn't cost too much, but it buffs their melee attack quite nicely, so they do quite a bit more damage. I think we take off. We maybe put a breath attack into the uh, Harganeth Executioners. I love the way he's just walking through them. Absolutely no fucks. <laughs> okay, he's taken off. Buff him up as he charges in. We need to take out the Harganth Executioners early, because if they get Murderous Prowess, uh, they will sting quite badly. But we've taken out one set of Witch Elves, uh, let's just uh, continue towards the centre of the gate. We'll just crush them here. We can actually do like the Curse of Years for the minus melee attack. To all of these units. I mean, if we do like bonus melee attack on our own units, it'd be pretty legit. Unfortunately, I can't press Alt on the Staff of Damnation, so I have to buff one side or the other. But the Curse of Years does last for years. I don't use that all too often, but uh, I thought I may as well start using this magic that I don't normally use. That's not very kind, the War Hydras using their breath attacks on my Mortis engine. Uh, let's take off with our Lord again. I'm not going to put a breath attack on the walls. I think I might just throw it down into the Black Garden Nagrond on the ground. I'm actually really surprised how well our melee forces are doing on this wall. Like, I guess we have, like, been using the abilities to buff up our own forces and debuff theirs, but still, pretty nuts. Barely been taking any damage. They did end up deploying a bunch of forces on the other gate. I think that's why this is a lot easier than it would otherwise be. Well, the Mortis engine is being engaged by the War Hydra. That is no good. I only noticed that because of the particle effects on the infantry on the walls. This hard kind of execution is getting slaughtered. I think it's time to come off the walls here.
All right, let's uh, pile down into this uh, War Hydra. Start smashing that. Get the Spirit Leech going. And as my forces come off the walls, we can get the invocations down, which would be really nice. Let's use the Arcane Conduit. I guess I could bring in some of these Crypt Ghouls. Pretty good for poison. I'm going to completely flank the Black Guard and Nagaron. Yeah, we'll just have them come in and charge into the back of them. Alright, let's just go and attack the other War Hydra. Put a Spirit Leech on it. I am going to have to invocate these guys as well since they're taking a lot of damage. That's the uh, Grave Guard attacking the Cold Ones. Bring our Black Guard over here as well. Or Black Knights, sorry. Odd Knights even, not Black Knights. <laughs> We may as well get the Mortis Engine in. Might have the Mortis Engine go help out uh, with the Cold One Knights. Have these uh, Ken race move over there as well. Mm, I should have killed off that Wall Hydra. It did come back in the end. I guess we can Spirit Leech it and kill it. I'm just going to use the Unbreakable on the Grave Guard there, so they do not crumble. Yes, awake, minions. Uh, looks like we've got the better of the War Hydras, which is good. Tripticals did their job. Let's now charge over to the Black Guard of Nagarond here. Look at this combination of forces. <laughs> it looks so cool. <laughs> well, goodbye, Cold One Knights. You really don't want to be messing with the Shrigoi Girl King. He is anti, anti large, you know. <laughs> Right, uh, some more infantry has arrived. These guys are really low. Go for an invocation here, and we'll pop the wand of jet. Now, how are they not dead yet? Come on, just kill them. I think they just keep regenerating as they run away and not die. <laughs> They're also being healed by the looks of things. I don't know how. Unless it is that regeneration. But the regeneration is normally not that quick. Oh well. If that uh, War Hydra continues to stick around, it is going to die. Pretty much got negative health right now. Really? <laughs> okay, that one's actually running off the field, so that's fine. Let's just spirit leech the other one. Finish that off. Uh, then we're going to provoke these guys off the walls again. Because they've got some black guard up here in the witch house. I guess I could just get Melon to go up there.
All right, let's keep one of the can rays down here just to help out with these cold one knights. We'll get them all centered to attack those cold one knights as well. And I'm just going to have Millen take off and kill off the black card and Agarond on the walls. I think as soon as they get attacked, they will start to rout. It's got to that point where we've killed off so many of them. really low. We don't have any more breath attacks. Let's just uh, buff up and here and start doing a bit more damage. Okay. We already used up all of our magic, so no need for invocations. And it's just plain old victory. And that's the last gate under our control. Let's just occupy it. And job done. Lord of Bloodshed. Actually a really nice item. Let's give it to him. The extra melee attack and weapon strength. I think his armor of fortune is fine. And his luck stone can be upgraded to a talisman of endurance. That's for sure. Not too keen on the Crown of Command. Is there anything else that we could get? Fireball spell, maybe. The Potion of Strength is decent for the extra armor piercing damage and weapon strength. That would allow us to take out those larger units again. So we'll do that. But unfortunately, guys, it has been my time. So we are going to leave it here. We've secured Ulthuan well and truly. All of these gates are now under our command. It's just a little bit of a shame that the Wood Elves are despoiling our new Ulthuan. But uh, we have started to spread that lovely vampiric corruption. And it's looking rather grey. <laughs> Which is a good thing. <laughs> but uh, that's it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>